Good day will group 5 and we are to present the parade of taxa in the phylum Apicomplexa. Before we start, let's have a brief discussion about this phylum. It is a known monophyletic group of parasitic species which is comprised of about 6,000 animal parasites. As a defining characteristic, it has its cortical alveoli, which is a vessel-like structure under the plasma membrane. Let's start the parade of taxa with the genus Adelina. This species is known as a parasite of centipedes and its oocysts are egg-shaped and the number of sporoblasts varies depending on the size of the oocyst. Next one is Aggregata garnhami from the genus Aggregata. Their oocysts are mainly oval or sometimes spherical with multiple sporocysts inside each oocyst. It is a common parasite of the common octopus and has two host life cycle. The next one is Ancora sagittata. Ancora sagittata is a unicellular and is observed to have two lateral projection which gives it the appearance of an anchor. It has an elongated body that is narrowed towards the posterior end. The next species is Antemosoma garnhami. This species is known as an erythrocytic murine parasite and is only known to occur in two locations, Ethiopia and Namibia, and it undergoes different blood stages. The next species is Apicistis bombi. Apicistis bombi is a known parasite of bumblebees in the genus Bombus. Its host becomes infected when an oocyst is ingested by the bumblebee and it eventually develops into a sporozyte in the intestine. The next species is Aranthiocystis muscarensis. This species is known as a pathogen of Anisoplea sagetum. And its infections are chronic and is mainly located in the hindgut. Its oocysts are lemon-shaped, which transforms into a spherical micronuclear schizons. The next species is Ascogregarina taiwanensis. Ascogregarina taiwanensis specifically infects the Asian tiger mosquito. Its occurrence is temperature dependent, with the infection rate higher in the summers compared to other seasons. The next species is Atoxoplasma deseri. Atoxoplasma deseri is a known avian blood parasite. It develops sexually in the blood and intestinal cells which eventually forms oocysts that are passed and sporulated in the feces. It will sporulate on the ground to infect new hosts. The next species is Babesia canis from the genus Babesia. This species is a tick-borne disease that infects dog reported worldwide. A single red blood cell can be infected by multiple organisms, usually up to 16. It has a pyriform shape with one end pointed and the other rounded. The next species is Besnoitia besnoiti. This species is an obligate intracellular protozoan parasite and it affects cattle, horns, and donkeys, and goats. The next species is from the genus Blabericola. It is a parasite of cockroaches with its oocyst oblong and significantly are narrower and longer than other species of Blabericola. The next species is Calyptospora fundera. This species is a parasite of fishes under the genus Fundulus. Its sporocytes stay in the cytoplasm of the gut basal cells and will modify their structure in 4-5 to five days. Before these days, 
this is not infectious to the fish host. For the genus Cariospora, we have Cariospora neofalconis, and, and this is the taxonomic classification. This is an enteroparasite observed in the birds of prey under the genus Falco. It is reported to have a prevalence in Mexico and America, and its clinical signs um, of an infected organism is regurgitation, depression, reduced appetite, hemorrhagic feces, diarrhea, weight loss, and acute death. This is an example species for the genus Cephaloidophora. Species from the genus Cephaloidophora are parasites of a deep sea amphipod or a Trophozoites are cylindrical and rigid and is composed of an epimerite and deutomerite. Nucleus is spherical and located in upper portion of deutomerite. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Chatonaria. The cells were covered by a trimembrane pellicle about 50 nanometers thick and organized in longitudinal folds with flattened tops. It is a parasite found in the intestine of the polychaete worms or binalatrelli. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Columella. Oosis wall was smooth, colorless, and without micropyle or striations. It is mostly found in reptiles, especially lizards, but infections are rarely detected. It is highly pathogenic and treatments are often unsuccessful. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Colepis methophila. It has globular mucron and the oocyte is hat shaped with two curved filamentous processes at opposite ends with wavy chains. It is a parasite of silverfish and a pathogen of Thermobia domestica. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Colpodella. They are small flagellated protists with motile stage consists of a pair of anterior orthogonal flagellum, vesicular mitochondrial cristae, inner alveolar membranes, and microspores. They are free-living and voracious predators of free-living protists. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Cryptosporidium. They are microscopic parasites that has an outer shell that provide protection and allow it to survive outside the host for long periods of time. It causes cryptosporidiosis, a diarrheal disease in humans and animals. Water is the most common way to spread the parasite. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Caspicella. The attachment apparatus had rows of uniform superficial spikes that point posteriorly between the longitudinal rows of epicytic folds. They are found in the intestine of the polynoid host Lepidonotus helotypus. It has set of unusual morphological traits like the spike attachment apparatus. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Cyclospora. Large coccidia at about 9 micrometers in diameter. It causes diarrheal disease, cyclosporiasis, and infects human hosts by consuming food or water contaminated with the parasite. It is common in tropical and subtropical areas. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Histoisospora. Species have oocytes with two sporocysts with four sporozoites, each having no steada bodies. It infects the entire sites of the small intestines of mammals via e fecal oral route and causes cystoisosporiasis. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Cystoxoon. The intraerythrocytic forms range between 0.8 and 2.3 micrometers in size within a mean of 1.64 micrometers. It has a tissue phase and an erythrocyte phase. It causes cystoxoonosis, an acute hemolytic disorder, it domesticates and often fatal. It is transmitted through the bite of dermacenter variabilis. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Dactylosoma. Hasmerogony and four merozoites, nucleus is endosome and has two hosts in their life cycle, a vertebrate and an invertebrate host. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Digialum. 
They are aseptate. They have epical complex with mucron, polar ring, polar ring extensions, subpellicular microtubules, and rub trials. They are a parasite of the marine gastropod mollusk Littorina, and they secrete enzymes into the cell before digesting the host cells. Here are the taxonomic classification of the genus Emeria. Oocytes has four sporocysts, each has two sporozoites. Sporogony is outside the cell, and it is a parasite of vertebrates and a few invertebrates. It causes coccidiosis, which affects the intestinal tracts of cattle, poultry, dogs, cats, sheep, and goats. Here is the taxonomic classification for the genus Frankelia. The genus Frankelia has rounded seas usually found in the brain of the host known as rodent species. After infection, it causes merozoic formation that leads to hepatic necrosis and perivascular cellular infiltration in several organs. Here are the taxonomic classification for the genus Ganymedes. The genus Ganymedes are characterized with intestinal aseptate gregarians with ball-like structure at the anterior end of the cell and cup-like structure at the posterior end. Its usual hosts are the marine crustaceans. The active stage is cylindrical with folds along the surface and nucleus at the center. Here are the taxonomic classification for the genus Geneorhynchus. The trapezoid of the genus Geneorhynchus is solitary, while its epimerit comprises a toroid to very shallowly doliiform base supporting a spineless hemiliptoid terminal tomidus, while its protomerit is broadly rounded to obvate. Lastly, its deutomerit is elongate, ellipsoidal to cardioid, broadly tapering from the protomerate deutomerate septum to a sharp point posterior. Here are the taxonomic classification for the genus Gusha. The genus Gusha are conical shaped structure towards the apical end of their cells made of fibers. It also has thin walled oocysts locking a micropyle have two valves composing the sporocysts with identical and a single longitudinal joint running along the midline. Its usual hosts are the aquatic vertebrates, mainly fishes, amphibians, and crocodilian. Here are the taxonomic classification for the genus Hemogregarina. Hemogregarina are unicellular, non-pathogenic, and elongate to fusiform oval organisms. It is larger in size compared to the cell's nucleus, and its usual hosts are the cold-blooded vertebrates such as fish, and reptiles for intermediate hosts, and leeches for definitive hosts, particularly in its red blood cells. Here are the taxonomic classification for the genus Hemoproteus. Hemoproteus are intracellular parasite that infect red blood cells. Its microgametocyte is larger and has more diffuse nucleus and paler staining characteristic compared to its macrogametocyte. Its usual hosts are the birds, reptiles, and amphibians. Here are the taxonomic classification for the genus Hemolivia. The hosts of the genus Hemolivia are the exothermic vertebrates, while its definitive hosts are the exodetics. It undergoes porogeny by conjugation and fertilization within the thick gut, followed by the formation of oocysts and generation of sporokinids. It has intraerythrocytic merogony and still has an unresolved phylogenetic relationships and evolutionary history. Here is the taxonomic classification for the genus Isospora. General morphology of the genus Isospora. The genus Isospora's oocyst has two sporoblasts, and it can grow up to 30 micrometers long and 12 micrometers wide. The sporocysts, on the other hand, are surrounded by a two-layered, colorless, smooth cell wall. 
Isospora can be commonly found in the epithelium of upper small intestine of humans and it only takes a day or a few to become infective as it passes through the human intestine to undergo sporogenic development. Next, we have the genus Cariolisus. Species from the genus Cariolisus are common parasites of European lizards and they have indirect life cycle. It is merogony takes place in an intermediate vertebrate host, more common in reptiles, while gamogony and sporogony happens in the gut of an invertebrate final host. As for their morphology, they are unicellular blood parasites and they have highly refractive cytoplasm. As gamons, they are oval with rounded ends and non-vacuolated cytoplasm. However, as trophozoites, they have vacuolated cytoplasm. Taxonomic classification for the genus Glossia. Species from the genus Glossia are mostly reported as parasites of invertebrates, more particularly of land snails, and they develop in the kidney epithelium of these snails. As for the general morphology of the genus Glossia, they have spherical oocysts containing numerous sporocysts, as you can observe on the picture on your left. However, some species manifest an ellipsoidal oocysts. Their oocysts are usually bilaminar, but for the species Glossia pachyleperon, they have trilaminar oocysts walls. Their outer layer being rough and dark brown, they, they have yellowish middle layer, and their inner layer being colorless. They also have sporosis containing up to four sausage-shaped and curved sporozoites. Moving on, we have the genus Glossella. The life cycle of the genus Glossella has not yet been clearly defined, but scientists have found that they are monoxenous, meaning to say that these parasites are host-specific and that they spend their entire lifetime in that specific host. Say, for example, Glossella equi are known to be parasites of equines or horses, and Glossella hydromeos known to be parasites of water rats and Glossella cobayae as parasites of guinea pigs. Also, they are renal parasite, which means that they reside at the kidney of their host. As for the morphology of the genus Glossella, their morphology are very much dependent on the current developmental stage, namely the uninuclear form, the multinuclear form, the budding form, the development stage of sporosis and the development stage of sporozoites. Their sky zones are 35 micrometers in diameter and have basophilic nuclei. For the genus Lancasteria, here is the taxonomic classification. Lancasteria is a genus of unicellular parasites of marine invertebrates and they reside in a variety of body organs of their host. As for its general morphology, trophozoites can reach the length of 130 micrometers to 160 micrometers. They are crescent-shaped and wrinkled and they also have concave margin. The anterior portion contains the nucleus and this portion is usually marked by the swollen head-like region of the cell. Uh, meanwhile, the cell surface is characterized by the longitudinal folds of the membrane. Next, we have the genus Lesudina. Species from the genus Lesudina are intestinal parasites of marine invertebrates, particularly of polychaetes, and generally they are host-specific. The general morphology of Lesudina, they are slightly arched in the longitudinal axis. Trophozoites can reach a length of 475 micrometers to 575 micrometers and 35 micrometers to 50 micrometers in width. The surface has longitudinal folds that terminates before reaching the anterior and posterior ends. 
taxonomic classification for the genus Leucocytozoon. Species of the genus Leucocytozoon are avian blood parasites and they are recorded in numerous birds across the continent except in Antarctica. They can be non-pathogenic and naturally adapted hosts but lethal when switching to a different host. They have large gametocytes, characterized by a lack of pigment ranging up to a maximum of 700 micrometers in diameter. As you can observe in the picture on your right, the host cell nuclei are pushed towards the most lateral region and becomes ultimately deformed. The cytoplasmic process is narrow with short tail, and their microgametocytes are larger than macrogametocytes. On this slide, we will see the taxonomic classification for nephromyces. Nephromyces cells are highly variable in morphology and most of which can be described as filamentous in nature, and different cell types would be seen in its different life stages. For the general description, it is a mutualistic marine endosymbiont of sea grapes, which are marine tunicates, and nephromyces can be found in the renal sac lumen. It was first described as a parasite, but its ubiquity or high cell density in mulgulates could mean that nephromyces infection can actually have a net benefit to its hosts. So, there is a mutually exclusive association between these two species which may have been due to its long evolutionary history. On this slide, we will find the taxonomic classification for Nycteria. For the morphology, the gametocytes can be seen in the image where it is found in the blood of its hosts. The gametocytes of Nycteria found from a bat host is usually round and compact with circular nuclei and it also has a central dense chromatin. For the description, Nycteria is a parasite that can infect mammals and other vertebrates, but it is most prevalent among African insectivorous bats where they feed on its blood. Actually, the name came from the first reported bat host genus, which is Nycteris. On this slide, we will find the taxonomic classification for Ophryocystis. Ophryocystis spores are elliptical or lemon-shaped, and they are usually found on butterfly scales as seen in the image. For the description, it is a protozoan parasite to the monarch butterfly, and it has two main life stages. First, we have the reproductive stage and the dormant stage. Infected butterflies exhibit decrease in lifespan, mating success, body mass, and flight ability. Here we will find the taxonomic classification for Plasmodium. Plasmodium has ring form trophocytes that are thin and may possess one to two chromatin dots as seen in the image. They are usually found on the red blood cell periphery and the gametocytes are crescent shaped. For female macrogametocytes, they have darker stains than that of male microgametocytes. Plasmodium falciparum is a predominant blood parasite in humans that is known to cause malaria. Gametocytes are carried by an anopheles mosquito during blood meal, or sporogonic cycle. Here we will see the taxonomic classification for polychromophilus. Polychromophilus oocytes are found on the midgut. Mature and immature oocytes look similar with other malarian parasites such as plasmodium as previously discussed, and the size usually ranges from 52 to 71 micron. Its sporozoites are found in the salivary glands and they usually look straight or slightly crescentic, and it has a length of 7.4 micron. Polychromophilus are actually malarial parasites of Vespertilio morinus, which is a specific species of bats. Here we will find the taxonomic classification for Pseudoclosia. 
The image shows the different endogenous stages of Pseudoclotra semiluna, where the first image is the crescent-shaped macrogametocyte, and images 2 to 6 will show the various developmental stages that it will undergo alongside the microgametocytes. And lastly, for the seventh image, we will find a sporulated oocyte. For the description, Pseudoclosia is a parasite to Mytilus edulis, Gallio provincialis, or Trusolius species complex, and they are usually found in the renal tubule. The slide shows us the taxonomic classification for Psychodiella. Psychodiella oocysts are found on the chorion of sandflies, while sporozoites are located in the ectoperitrophic space of the intestine of the larvae as seen on the image. For the description, psychodiella are actually parasites of Phlebotomus surgenti, which is a vector of Leishmania tropica, a causative agent of human cutaneous Leishmaniasis, and they are only found among female sandflies. Quadrospinospora is classified under the class Sporozea. This genus is known to be thick-walled, have solitary gamonts, Orbicular gametocysts and elliptoid oocysts provided with four long spines to attach pole. Some species of Quadrospinospora are known to infect the midguts of some grasshoppers. Rhytidocystis is the only genus within the monotypic family Rhytidocystidae. The shape of their trophozytes varies from oblong to flat oval cells. The cytoplasm is filled with granules of carbohydrate storage. The smaller cells are more transparent than larger ones, and the parasites were observed to have a spherical nucleus located centrally. These parasites are mostly found in the midget epithelium of their hosts, such as the polychaetes. Sarcocystis are found under the family Sarcocystidae. Sarcocystis are generally thick-walled and striated with numerous villar protrusions. The cysts were septate and their interior compartments were filled with cystocytes. With 196 species currently, these parasites are known to infect mammals and some reptiles and birds. Selenidium are classified under the family Lacedinidae. Generally, this genus is known to have vermiform trophozytes with apical complexes and few epicytic folds. The gamons are extracellular and are cylindroid in shape with longitudinal striations, and the oocysts are spherical or ovoid with four infective sporozytes each. With about 56 species recognized, the genus of this parasitic alveolates are known to infect marine invertebrates such as polychaete worms. The genus of Theleria is found under the family Theleriidae. The mesozoites of this genus are pyriform, round or ovoid in shape, forming a tetrad called the Maltese cross. Species of this genus such as the T. annulata and T. parva are known to cause diseases known as tropical theleriosis and east coast fever on cattle. And last but not the least, the genus of Toxoplasma is classified under the family Sarcocystidae. Trophocytes under this genus are crescent-shaped, with one end pointed and the other end rounded. The tissue cyst is round or oval, while the oocyst is oval in shape. Toxoplasma is first described in a small rodent called Gondii, and these intracellular parasites are known to cause toxoplasmosis in many warm-blooded animals, including humans. <laughs>